Hello, and welcome to another appointment with the doctor. Uh, this time I'm joined by a star, an absolute star, of the Harry Potter films. Oh yes, we've got a regular, one and only, a Weasley in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely Christopher Rankin. Yay! Yay! It's very nice to be here, Dr. Bev. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. I oh, know. Thank you for joining me. It's, it's oh, lovely. Um, you're at home at the moment because everyone's on lockdown, obviously. I am, yes. And, 11, uh, 12 weeks in, whatever it is now. Yes, it's, like, it's just blurred. Apparently, there was something called May at some stage. I, there was I have March, no idea. March, and apparently it's June, so I don't know what happened in between. Um, but thank you for joining me. I know that you have a, a very busy time of it, and you're always doing things for fans. So I appreciate you squeezing me in. It's oh, a um, pleasure. Um, very casual, quick chat, really. Um, I want to, I've done a little bit of research on you. Um, some things I've made up. There are Good. things about you I have discovered yesterday whilst I was researching. Oh, Lordy. About you, which I'm very excited about. Um, so you were born in New Zealand. Born and bred. Kiwi. Passport holding Kiwi. Yeah. And, um, and then you moved over to Norfolk. To Norfolk. That's right. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Very flat. Yeah. Norfolk. As you can tell from both of my very strong accents, I yeah. grew up in New Zealand and Norfolk. Yeah. yeah. Um, you do have a very BBC accent. Here's I the do, and I, I don't know where it comes from because my mum's from London and my dad's from East Riding in Yorkshire. So quite how I've ended up with this, having grown up in New Zealand and Norfolk and lived in Wales now for 10 years, mm. nearly? Where are we? Yeah, 10 years, 10 years. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've, I've, this is this is what you get. But it does move around wherever I go. My accent, my accent goes to wherever that place is. Which Especially if you're in a conversation with somebody with a, Sc a thick Scottish accent, do you find yourself starting just star staring at them in absolute incomprehension? To be honest, <laughs> um, but no, no. I've got this. Um, there's a family that we see at a lot of comic cons. Um, Sophie and her mum Elaine especially, uh, Sophie's I think 11, 12 or 13 now, but they've been coming to the Comic Cons and they come and see us quite a lot and they're, f they're from proper from the black country and they proper talk <laughs> like that and you find after about five minutes of talking to them that you've started going like that <laughs> and you think they must think I'm taking the mick but I really, it's like, I'm not, I promise I'm not taking the mick, I just, I don't know. It's one of those things though isn't it, people just pick up accents and it, may, it helps you fit in I think. I spent the first few months of um, lockdown in Walsall in the West yeah. with my friends. Um, and one of them does have a very thick accent. And I did find myself going, do you know I Baba? <laughs> <laughs> I turned on Walsall Christmas lights once, I'll have you know. Did you? Yes. I didn't know your dad was from East Riding. There's a wonderful place there called Beverly. Be that's where my dad's from. Beverly, wonderful place. Yeah. Beautiful, little, beautiful little town as well. I've been there many Beautiful minutes. Minster town. Yeah, that's where my it dad is. grew up. Yeah. I was hoping mum, that would be a good place for my mum to retire to, you know, far enough away from me, too close to me. <laughs> but it isn't, and it is what it is. Um, so uh, let's go straight to it. Um, you appeared in six of the eight Harry Potter films, I believe. That is correct, yes. Um, starting off in the first one as a prefect. Yes, school prefect. Um, now, I know that you and I have, we've chatted before, um, and I know that one of your favourite scenes was actually edited out of the movies. It was. We did this. There's a whole there's the, the the Percy bit in um, Philosopher's Stone. I will not call it Sorcerer's Stone for any Americans watching this. It is the <laughs> Philosopher's Stone, written in England by an English lady, sort of philosophers. Um, where the the whole Percy bit, Percy takes the first years from the Great Hall up to the Gryffindor common room. Um, you know, tells them to watch out for moving staircases and fat ladies and portraits and passwords and capital all that kind of stuff in the middle of that in the book and when we filmed it there's a um little bit where they meet peeves the poltergeist mm -hmm. who is one of my favorite characters in the book because he's just anarchic and chaotic and is just there to mess things up which is always nice it's a nice comic relief um and we filmed we filmed that with a wonderful actor uh by the name of rick mail yes um who was cast as Peeves the Poltergeist um, and was everything you would expect and more. Um, the, the, there's several variations on the story for why they chose not to put Peeves in the film. Um, one of which is that it was too distracting from the storyline to keep having this character come up 
and essentially distract from the plot for a few minutes because that's what you know that's what the jester does isn't it you know they come in and go oh look at this look at this look at this and it just takes away from the kind of the speed of a movie um the reason that i think and i think is probably one of the reasons too is that he was so funny that there is not a single usable take from any of the stuff we filmed <laughs> because normally like when when we film things like ghosts or or you know elements that weren't physically there when we were filming so the ghosts uh the quidditch for example things like that if there was something going on that couldn't be seen in front of us then you'd just have some random person from the crew or um a guy do you remember a guy called les bub who used to do children's television Vaguely. hubbub yeah well he was um he was what we call a cast reader so he'd come and he'd read the voices off camera so that there was a sort of a character like he read the sorting hat for mm -hmm. example when we did the sorting scene he'd stand behind the camera and do all the voices and sort of bring character to something that wasn't really there at the time um but in the case of Peeves, because it was Rick Mail that they'd cast, mm -hmm. they took Rick to, we filmed, um, we filmed in Gloucester Cathedral for that bit, in the cloisters at Gloucester. Um, and they took Rick and Rick stood behind the camera and essentially hurled abuse at us for <laughs> two solid weeks. But I swear that there can't have been a single take where somebody isn't, you know, chewing their bottom lip in <laughs> sheer desperation because it was just phenomenal. Um, but yeah, he was he was wonderful to work with, and it's a shame we never got to see it. Yes, you never know. Maybe there'll be some anniversary director's cuts. Um, well, it's twenty years next year, Bev. Yes, I know, um, and it's quite bizarre because you know I um, has one of the things I've been doing during lockdown is rewatching watching things, and the Potter films have been on TV. Have um, they? Seen your have... little face without a beard um, is quite. Yeah. Fun, I must be honest. Um, <laughs> Do you have any other particular strong memories from the films or people you enjoyed oh working with? I mean, I mean so, so many, so many. Julie Walters obviously being the first sort of port of call for any of you. Know, if, if you could choose a mother to have in the world, it would be Julie Walters, I think. Um, again, everything you would expect from her to be and more. She was, she was amazing to work with and... Um, yeah, it just kept us happy the whole time. I think filming the stuff with the Weasleys, especially because it's, I'm an only child. So mm -hmm. having lots of siblings, albeit fictional ones, and this kind of this big, loud, crazy family is a very new experience for me. There's only me and my mum in my family now. And, and we're quite sort of um, restrained, I think is the right way to put it. Quiet people most of the time. So having this kind of loud crazy family was was an experience and um yeah having having julie walters as, as your mum is is every is every dream come true she's absolutely absolutely listen. although i think i'd just be stood there quoting lines from acorn antiques that's it <laughs> i'm asking her how many soups she wanted um so obviously the harry potter's been a big part of your life and uh, yeah continue, continues to be because you jet all over the world as, as part of the comic con circuit well, um, normally, yes, I've I've been very much stuck within a five mile radius yes. of of my Newport postcode area for the last well, what, yeah, twelve weeks now, which is um, very unlike me, and it's starting it's starting to get a little bit itchy at the feet, if I'm honest. Yes, yeah, a little bit. Um, and unfortunately, there's just too much distance for us to socially meet. I know, I um, know. The time is coming. The time is coming. Um, <laughs> So you work the Comic-Con circuit. I know that you see lots of your of other people who do that. What do you like the most about those? I love, there's, there's many, many things I love about Comic-Cons. It's, it's, an, it's an extremely privileged thing to be able to do is to, you know, travel the world, get to go to all these. And I, when I say travel the world, they are everywhere, Comic-Cons. Um, on, on an average year i let's take a couple of years ago for example i did um we did chile uh, we did santiago and chile we did mexico uh three or four places in america several places in europe and then the joys of places like cleethorpes uh watford um preston like you literally you get everything from you know giant american convention centers with 20 30 000 people to you know, what is essentially a 
sort of film film buffs car boot sale in a sports hall in um, in Cleethorpes. It's 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 wonderful, and you you meet not only do you meet people sort of on on my side of the table, as it were. You know, the sort of, you get to meet you know all these people that you never ever expect you're going to meet you know doctor who's people from films and tv shows that you've grown up watching and loving and and you get to spend time with them and make friends with them and that's wonderful but you get to meet people who have a shared passion for something yes. especially for instance if it's um i mean if it's a general comic-con the general thing is that you are into film and tv and comics or wrestling or whatever um but if and I do a lot of very specifically Harry Potter ones, obviously. And going to a venue where there's fifteen thousand people who have this one very special thing in common mm -hmm. is is amazing. And I, I think it's it's really special because Harry Potter, especially, I find is is a really accepting environment, and it's it's a it's a safe place where it doesn't it really doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, you know, rich, poor, uh, gay, black, white it doesn't matter you are all there for one thing and that is your one common love and that brings people together and I think that's that's a remarkably special thing especially 20 years on. I was fortunate enough to do, uh, be asked to join you at a, an event in uh, in Wales uh, yes. even for Harry Potter and we were in a church hall essentially yeah and it was packed to the rafters. It was insane wasn't it? Uh, and it was quite overwhelming, the amount of love, not only for Harry Potter, but also for you as one of the cast members. Um, and I remember you did um, a reading, and then we did a small Q&A, and then you had to sign things. Yeah. And then you had to sign things, and then you had <laughs> some more things. And yet still they came. <laughs> it was like... I you guess. Had a cute energy, and <laughs> you spent more time signing things and meeting people than you did doing the Q&A and the book reading. And it was wonderful to see people's faces light up and not just kids either, I have to say. Uh, well, well, no, I mean, it's Harry Potter, like it's, it's over 20 years since the first book came out. I think it was 97 or 98. Mm -hmm. So my generation, I'm 30, I'll be 37 this year. It's, it's people kind of between, I'd say 35 and 40 who are the people who read the books Originally. At the age they roughly the age they were supposed to be as they were coming out, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was aimed at sort of older children and younger teens, realistically, wasn't it? Um, and we're yeah, we're suitably middle aged now, really. You know, I friends of mine have kids that are now as old as I was when I first started reading Harry Potter, mm -hmm. so yeah, grown ups, grown ups love it, and it's full second generation now. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it is heartwarming to see something so loved. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, the only things I can compare it to are, you mentioned Doctor Who, the, the Doctor Who world or the Star Trek world. The Star absolutely. Is, and there's a passion and a love uh, yep. for things. Um, and I think that's brilliant. Um, so one of the things I found out about you yesterday, on a slight <laughs> tangent, um, yes. You've done something that I would absolutely love to do. You did something called Total Wipeout. I did do Celebrity, Celebrity, Total Wipeout. Um, God, a, like a long time, like nine or ten years ago now. Yeah. Oh, please tell me about that. That is a show I used to, I was addicted to. It was the most daft thing I think I've ever done. Um, it was at a point, I was at university actually, it was a point um, where... They, I think they must have been filming the sixth Harry Potter film or just finished filming the sixth Harry Potter film, which I hadn't been in. Mm -hmm. And I had a couple of years away from it. So I'd kind of put the acting down and was, I'd gone to uni to train as a, um, in TV production, which is mm -hmm. one of the things I've been doing oh, yeah, I've almost full time ever since. We'll get to that then. <laughs> um, but, and then out of the blue, this, this call came from my ex-manager uh, saying, the wipeout had been in touch would i want to go and do it and i was like well yes <laughs> because for several reasons one because it's wipeout and you know how often do you get the chance to do something as ridiculous as that ridiculous, yes. you know even if you get to pay to do it as an obstacle course it's not quite 
what we remember as the inflatable course at the swimming pool when we were kids you know it's, it's like the most extreme version of that you could possibly imagine it's filmed in argentina mm -hmm. uh because of well it isn't anymore obviously it's been it's it's no longer in existence but the health and safety restrictions of it meant that argentina was the only place they could possibly find that would allow it to be shot and it was for charity mm -hmm. you know we we got a small amount of money as a kind of courtesy for the five days that it took to to go there film it and come back again um and then if you won you won like i think it was about i can't remember i think i want to say it was 10 grand for charity i didn't win yeah. but um i came fourth i think that's that's all right that's 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 acceptable yeah um, that's fine isn't it it's a long way from diving into a swimming pool to rescue a brick at the bottom while in your pajamas. Yes. So, so absolutely. I think it's, I was literally, I was like, I can't believe Chris did this and I never knew. I honestly, I can't believe I, I can't believe I did it either. I found um, somebody managed to find me a copy of it again recently. So I actually saw it for the first time in years. It. Right. Can you pencil me in? When I come over for dinner, we're watching that. All right. I'll, I'll pop you a little direct link to it, love. It's fine. Um, but it's, um, it was, it was it was just it was so daft but we had such a good time and it was such a lovely bunch of people that we went out there with because they filmed we filmed two episodes at once mm -hmm. so there was i think you have oh god i can't even remember how many people you have on each episode but there was probably 15 20 celebrities um notably peter duncan from oh. blue peter and duncan dares dom jolly uh, my friend uh, Melissa Suffield, who uh, was Lucy Beale in EastEnders, mm -hmm. uh, who I've done Panto with a few times over the last couple of years now. Um, so we've stayed really good friends. Uh, oh, who else do we have? Uh, Camilla Dallarup from Strictly. Okay. Um, also, it was, it was a wonderful, very eclectic mix of people. Um, and we just had a very silly time in Argentina. And in the middle of it, got to fall off incredibly high things that look relatively safe and really really aren't i mean dom broke all his feet all it broke dom dom jolly broke a foot um somebody else cracked their collarbone and perforated near it. like it's dangerous oh my goodness it's really dangerous um so but it was it again absolutely in a heartbeat <laughs> yeah brilliant um you mentioned that you did um studying for production side of the yeah business. And I know that you've worked on um, quite well-known TV shows as well. So things like Atlantis, I worked uh, on Atlantis. Witches, Downton Abbey. Downton Abbey, yes. Uh, so um, do you like being behind the camera as much or is it a completely different world? It's, for me, mm -hmm. the reason that I wanted to learn to uh learn tv production and to, and to kind of go into that realm was that i'd spent at this point eight or nine years working as an actor in doing harry potter in front of the camera and as somebody who got lucky i got harry potter essentially by writing it well a cheeky letter. yes definitely i wrote a cheeky letter to bbc news round which is how they were looking for quite a lot of the cast for Harry Potter and how quite a lot of us actually got it was by writing to Newsround and saying I'd like to play Percy Weasley because I'm ginger 16 and a school prefect which is what happened um, but I'd had no formal training I'd done musicals at school and I, I was into performing I loved performing I loved musical theatre still do um, and I was part of the youth local youth theatre and that kind of stuff but I'd never trained I just got kind of I fit. I fitted what they needed, and mm -hmm. was lucky to be there. Um, but what I sort of found over eight or nine years of doing that was that I preferred being on a stage to being in front of a camera. Being in front of a camera, I find um, as an actor more tricky, more difficult, um, and less fulfilling most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but the process of filmmaking and t filmmaking TV, ev you know, everything that is involved making shows with cameras, is fascinating and the amount of it's it's like that iceberg of what you see on what you see on telly is like just the little tip mm -hmm. and then there are hun literally hundreds of people behind that camera that nobody ever sees well you see them on the credit reels at the end you know all these hundreds of people who are working their backsides off 12 14 hour days six to eight to nine months of the year to to create this you know 30 seconds that you 30 seconds 30 minutes three hours whatever it is it's 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 incredible and the amount 
that fascinates me and and that world really excites me but as a performer i prefer being on stage in front of a live audience and and having that sort of that buzz of of it being real and right there whereas i think acting for screen is is a technical balance of getting everything right you could you could get you could give your best performance in front of that camera on your first take but maybe the booms dropped in from the top the boom mics come in or the camera's slightly off focus or not quite in the right position or one of the extras has fallen over a lamp post behind you and you've got to do it again and it will never you'll have done that once <laughs> Um, I spent uh, two days uh, being an extra for Casualty yeah. when they did an episode based on Holby Pride. And um, ah, yes. I, was on, I was on screen for less than three seconds, two days filming. And there was one scene where I literally walked backwards and fell over the... Oh, bad. I was mortified. <laughs> I think that's why I got cut down to less than three seconds. Um, <laughs> You mentioned um, a love of musical theatre. Mm. Uh, I know that you have this because um, we've been out socially. I seem to remember that you were in the room where it happened. Um, Hamilton is a particular favourite, I know. Hamilton is a big favourite. And we met and went for drinks at a bar in Cardiff. And remind me, who was else? Who else was there? Oh, this there was this guy. I mean, I don't know what he's done since but um lin-manuel miranda i think that's his yes name. um who else yeah. you both? hamilton and hamilton things, was in... in the heights moana he's in his dark materials which is why he was in cardiff to start with mary poppins returns mary poppins. you know Os oscar nominated multi grammy winning pulitzer yes. prize but you two have become quite pally since then as well haven't you we came become we came we became twitter friends yeah yeah, nice. yeah which is lovely um he, he's a big Harry Potter nerd. Well, he's a big nerd. He is, he's yeah. a big nerd. I think I can say that. He would happily admit to that himself. Um, and a big Harry Potter nerd. He's a Slytherin, um, ah. which we don't hold against anybody. There's That'd nothing be wrong fine. with being ambitious. Um, but yeah, we, he, he tweeted something about Harry Potter and I joined in. He noticed it. He followed me. I messaged him and said, you know, I know, I know you're around Cardiff. You know, if you fancy just having a, if you, if you ever need a break and a chat with somebody who's into musicals and just you know isn't gonna like pour at you like some crazed fan for a minute you know where i am and um and they he invited ness and myself to a um to porters they had a private sing-along session which was which was wonderful so yeah he's a he's a he's a treat wonderful. he's a treat um so uh, blah, 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 blah. um you mentioned ness there um, yeah. Now, I first sort of met you guys a couple of years ago when you um, very lovely um, offered to come along and co-host at uh, Pride Cymru in Cardiff. Pride Cymru, yes, 2018, wasn't it, I think? And, um, and we became pals then because you have a, a love of a, of a particular TV show. Well, um, I have a love of a particular... Genre um, of entertainment. Gen genre and mm -hmm. yeah. um, performance style, I think. Yeah. Um, um, you're a big drag fan. Love it, adore it, have um, done forever. Adore Delano it, yes. Um, <laughs> Party. Um, and we met and you came along and I just remember we did nothing but laugh. Watching you teeter along <laughs> at the Cardiff Museum in uh, thigh high boots. Um, nine, nine inch, yes, nine inch platform heels, darling. I think the moment I saw that, I thought, I'm going to be friends with these guys. <laughs> and we've been pals since you've come along, you've supported um, uh, Pride ever since. Uh, of course. It's not the only um, charity that you support. You and Chris, uh, sorry, you and Ness have formed uh, the House of Christmas. We have the House of Chris Ness. Yes, Tell us which, a little bit about that. Well, that, I mean, I grew up surrounded by... Um, by friends and family in in the lgbtq community that's you know my love of musical theater going to youth theater loving musicals you know you find you are surrounded by people from the lgbt community and they've always been my friends and my family so ever since i was probably 10 or 11 it's been a massive part of my life um but as i was saying earlier about conventions um one thing i've found and certainly over the last few years and as I, as I think it has become more acceptable to be openly uh, talking about these things 
is people who've come up to me and Ness at conventions because Ness comes with me and we we travel together she she's my assistant of course but I don't I wouldn't travel without her we we do everything together um people come up to us and say you know Harry Potter has got me through really tough times in my life I I'm trans and my parents don't accept that or have problems with that and Harry Potter is somewhere that I, something I can watch or read or be into that makes me feel safe and I and I think it's you know it's the story it's Harry's story this this kid who's not loved because of what he is by his family and then going to this magical school where everyone is more or less the same as him and he's he's accepted because of course he is um and I think that's one of the magical things about Harry um but yeah we doing doing events and people coming up and saying you know thank you for looking after us even though you're not doing anything you've done your job which you know I'm looking after you by you putting a dvd on that I happen to be in um and we thought well there's there's more to this you know and one of the one of the um, privileges of having a following uh like I'm lucky enough to do on on social media and uh, events and things like that is that I can try and help we can try and help Ness and I um so we formed the house of chris ness um which it, it's not it's not a charity in itself it's more of a kind of virtual community virtual family um i'm wearing a house of chris ness badge at the moment actually but it's um it's i'd, I'd like to think of it as a safe space um where anybody gay straight bi queer trans doesn't matter if if you feel like you need people who will love you and accept you unconditionally, then you are welcome. Um, and we will do everything we can to make you feel welcome and find people that can look after you as well and that you can make new friendships and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and we sell, we sell our little badges yes. at events. Um, we're now starting to sell some merchandise on, on our online store. Not a plug, but it's there. And, and um, at, yes, chrisrankin.co.uk, there's a store. Um, and all the, all the House of Chris Ness branded stuff, uh, we donate, I think it's 50% of the profits to uh, Albert Kennedy Trust at the moment. Um, although we will, you know, we'll work around and we'll do other charities as time goes on, but it's the Albert Kennedy Trust at the moment that 50% of those profits go to. Um, Brilliant. It, it's, sure it's not much, but it's, you know, we do what we can. Yes, I'll make sure that the link to the page goes um, on all the socials that attach to this video as well. Thank you, Dr. Bear. Um, so I'm going to ask you a few quick questions now. Ask away. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a TV show called In the Actors Studio, of course. Uh, I adored that show. Um, no self-respecting actor has not seen that show. <laughs> uh, I have stolen the end part of his interviews. I've stolen and tweaked. So question Excellent. number one, would you like... Ooh, I'm going to ask you the same question twice. Okay. So first of all, what's your favourite song? That changes literally depending on the time of day, the weather, and how I've rolled out of bed. Um, but one song that I will always come back to um, at the moment is uh, a song... Hmm. I'm going. To, I'm going to. At the moment, I think it's it's just such a difficult question for me because, uh -huh. as you can see, I'm I'm very musical. I love my music, um, and it does. It changes all the time, all the time. Uh, but I'm going to choose a song called "Welcome to the Rock" from a musical called "Come from Away," because it's about it's it's about. Um, uh, if you don't know, viewers, it's um, a show about a true story of a town called Gander in Newfoundland, which is the biggest it's the last airport basically on the east coast of america where planes could stop to refuel before crossing the atlantic in the days when they couldn't do it on a full tank um and on 9 11 when when they shut the airspace over america 38 jumbo jets had to land 
at speed and Gander was the place they landed and this tiny little town I think it's of, I think nine, uh, seven, like seven or eight thousand people tiny little town with a massive airport um, but nine thousand people in 38 planes landed there in the space of like 12 hours and this town opened its doors and welcomed these strangers into their homes and into their lives and it's just the most uplifting and wonderful wonderful story about you know because we come from everywhere we all come from away it's it's just it's it's rousing and uplifting and yeah it makes me ball my face off <laughs> um so similar vein what's your favorite film uh mrs doubtfire <laughs> amazing love that has always been will not question it you can every time you watch that film you spot something new yes what's your um, favorite song oh um I'm I'm loathed to say it out loud um, because I do it's it's a guilty pleasure, but at the same time I just kind of go oh no the Macarena. Uh, no, I, I'm with you on that. That's absolutely fine. Because just when you think it's finished, there's another bloody go. It gets <laughs> it. Um, what's your favourite sound? The sound of an orchestra tuning up. Nice. And what's your least favourite sound? Um, ooh, that's a good question. Uh, somebody puking. <laughs> okay, okay, I like that. Um, what job other than the one you have now would you like to try? Oh, that oh, that's such a. I I I don't know. I think I would like to, and I had a little taste of this when I was working in production. Uh in Cardiff I, I did and I was working in um in the in a development department for a production company in Cardiff and I did a little bit of uh tv and film legal stuff so I and it fascinates me absolutely fascinates me so I think possibly something legal it's so maybe not not a lawyer not necessarily like I object your honor but like the contract law really really interests me so maybe maybe something something not like not what Lawyer I knew at all. No, I, I bet. <laughs> I thought you were going to say drag queen. Um, and we'll keep you in mind for Celebrity UK Drag Race, I think. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, what's your favourite treat? Oh, my favourite treat uh, would be a nice cold glass of white wine. And finally, if heaven exists... Hmm. What would you like God to say to you when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, <laughs> I nearly said, hello, 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 but that's not what I mean. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd like him to say thank you. That's a because great... then I then I would know that I'd done okay. That's a great response. Um, you were asked if you would like to prepare a question to ask me. Yes. So, your turn, my lovely. Well, Dr. Bev, you know I'm a huge fan of drag. Mm. Full stop. Not just drag race, but drag in general. And it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful art form. And I know it brings joy to me and millions of other people all around the world. Um, and I know it's not as easy as it looks. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not just putting on a wig and a pair of heels and prancing around for a couple of hours. What would you say is the hardest part for you of being a drag queen? Um, I think the hardest part for me as, as a drag Queen or any performer is when you know you've got to go on stage and do the whole teeth and tits when you really really don't want to. Um, I've had to perform literally I've had news that a friend or family member has passed away and 15 minutes later I've been booked and paid to appear on stage and I've had to walk on. Yeah. Um, that, I think, is when you know you really don't want to be there. 
or you'd rather be anywhere else. That's probably the hardest thing. The other thing I would say is when you, you don't get food. Mm-hmm. And by that, I mean from the audience. Yeah. Uh, there are some performers who are so slick and so well rehearsed, they walk on stage, they know what they're going to do, when they're going to do it, how they're going to say it, what song goes there, that ends there. And there are other acts who walk on stage and they all straight from the hip, padded hip, um, and they play with the audience. And that's the kind of performer I like to consider myself. So if I walk on stage and I'm looking around and the audience are dead behind the eyes, I'm like, what am I going to do? And yeah. That's probably the hardest thing, um, I think. To be in a I totally get that. Because one of, one of my favourite things to do is pantomime. Yes. I adore being in pantomime. And it's, it's a very similar process that if you've got a crowd who just want to sit there with their arms folded and go, go entertain. on then, entertain yeah. me. <sighs> it's diabolical. So, if we're running joke with all the drag queens in Cardiff, if one of us is at another one's show, we'll sit and go, come on, entertain me. <laughs> and we'll go, you and you. Yeah, you were the Scarecrow, weren't you, in The Wizard of Oz? Recently? I did Scarecrow two years ago in The Wizard of Oz. I did The Wizard in The Wizard of Oz yes. last year, uh, which was uh, different for me. <laughs> very, very different for me. Um, but I've done Panto for years. I love it. It's, it's wonderful. It's one of my... It, it's... It's one of the reasons that I adore the theatre is, and especially pantomime, is that it's it's so often the first opportunity children get to experience live performance, and it's very often the only time of a year of year that a family will go to the theatre. Mm-hmm. Very often, because quite frankly, the theatre is bloody expensive. It is. Um, it is. And and it's a Christmas treat, so it's it's a really special thing, um, and it's and it's an art form in itself. I think. You know, absolutely. I'm very British. Fifty-two shows in a row, and not a single one of them would be the same, and that's that's exciting. Yeah. Well, um, that's just about it. So, one last question: What's next for you, Chris? Well, that's a bloody good question. <laughs> Who knows? Right at this minute in time, when we'll be let back out again. Um, but um, there's a few things in the pipeline. Um, I'm doing a pilot for a little dark comedy tv show at some point in the near future hopefully um called hipsteries hipsteries i need to pronounce that correctly um which should be great fun with a friend of mine i met working on harry potter actually (laughs) so that's it's a nice little touch from back in the day um i'm working on a script for a short film that i hope to film well i was hoping to film it kind of now but we'll see when that happens Hopefully, pantomime at Christmas, um, you know, restrictions allowing. I've got a lot of events penciled for later in the year, Comic-Cons here, there and everywhere that, again, supposed to be now, but hopefully will be in the autumn and the winter. Um, and yeah, watch this space. A few exciting things up the, up, the, um, up the line that have been mentioned and muttered about and murmured about and discussions have been had, but we can't go there quite yet. So we shall see. And I know every every performer says, "Oh, there's something I, there's something going on, but I can't tell you what it is." Oh, exactly. Legitimately, the there is. <laughs> so, um, somebody asked me this question, and I was like, "There's no one that likes to talk about it." Gosh, um, it just makes you. us all say it all makes us sound like we have nothing coming up, but we're trying to be mysterious, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> That's the. That's what it's, I'm much more important than I think. Um, darling, it's been lovely chatting with you. Thank it's you. It's always gorgeous to see you, Bev. Thank you. Um, thank you for being part of Appointment with the Doctor. Um, and thank you for watching again. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, do keep watching more little chats with uh, friendly, familiar faces coming up again very soon. In the meantime, thank you to Chris Rankin, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye, all. <laughs>